So your horse has been colicking and now we've arrived and I'm gonna go through the process that we go through when we come to a colic and work our way through it to decide how bad or how mild we think it is. First thing I'm gonna do is use my stethoscope. Actually, first, first thing I'm gonna do is evaluate your horse as I walk up. For example, looking at this horse right now, Vespa has her ears up, she's bright, she's alert, she's interacting with her environment. That tells me that even if we are a colic, we're relatively mild and we're probably not that painful. If I walk up to a horse that is throwing themselves on the ground, standing there looking really mopey, that's a very different evaluation that I'm gonna start with. The next thing that we look at, again, is those vital signs. So I'm gonna grab a heart rate. For me, the heart rate is a huge first indicator. It's gonna tell me a lot about where this horse is. We'll arrive and have horses who are super painful. They've got a heart rate of 36. That tells me that while they're painful, we've got something manageable. On the other hand of things, if I have a heart rate that's over 60, we're gonna start talking about surgery and at the very least referral to a hospital situation where they can get advanced care. Heart rates over 60 are a big, big, big deal in horses and nearly always make us think referral is gonna be necessary for advanced care. I'm also gonna take a listen to gut sounds on both sides and potentially in the center up underneath here for uh, sand, not always, but sometimes we can hear, literally like you're at the beach with a seashell to your ear, if we're right underneath the middle of the abdomen. If we hear it, we know sand's a problem. If we don't hear it, it doesn't mean there isn't sand, but like I said, if we hear it, we know we've got sand and that's gonna dictate treatment in that direction. The other thing I'm gonna do is take a little tiny bit of blood, and this is gonna look like, if you know someone with diabetes, it looks just like a glucometer. This is what we call a lactate meter and it tests lactate. Lactate is normally a number that's less than around one and a half in normal horses, humans, dogs, cats, you name it. In colicky horses with compromised intestine, this number goes over three pretty quickly. And if the number is over one and a half, to be honest, I'm normally looking at that horse a little bit more skeptically and really seeing if there's something I need to address. We're gonna go with some medications like Flanixin or the commonly known banamine that everyone thinks of when it comes to a colic. <laughs> and then two other drugs that I commonly use on colics are buscopan and a drug called xylazine. Xylazine is a straight up sedative. Banamine does not cause sedation at all. It only causes pain relief and it takes about 45 minutes to kick in even when I give it IV. Buscopan and xylazine work nearly instantly. So I'm gonna get the sedative effect from xylazine to help the horses calm down and allow me to do other procedures. And then I'm gonna give buscopan. It's a great drug for colics. It gets the GI tract to just whew, calm down. It actually shuts it down, but not for long, only for about 30 or 45 minutes and can really help with some of the painful spasmodic colics like gas colics. The next thing I'm gonna do is things that a lot of you know about and that's passing a tube and doing a rectal exam. The rectal exam gives us a lot of information about where things are in the GI tract, how full we are with gas, do we have an impaction, those sorts of things. Great information comes from a rectal exam. The other thing I get from there is how hydrated your horse is. As we're doing the rectal exam, the rectal mucosa as we go in is often very dry on dehydrated horses where they may have good mucous membranes and they may have a good jugular refill and skin tent, some of the other things we look at but when we palpate rectal mucosa is dry. So it's a good first line indicator of hydration along with all that other information we get. We're gonna pass a tube up the nose. That's where the sedation really comes in handy and see if we get any what we call reflux. So as you know, horses can't vomit and that's due to the sphincter at the top of their stomach. It's really, really, really tight but sometimes they do still have that buildup of fluid and they need to vomit. So by passing the tube, we can see if they need to do that. And if not, then we're gonna do uh, hydration through the tube because dilution is a solution to pollution always. And so when we have most colics, we're gonna try to get a decent amount of water in via the tube. We don't have to rely on your horse to drink it then. The other thing we're gonna do is a salt solution. And that is going to be a combination of multiple different salts and some baking soda. Uh, so basically, Gatorade without the sugar. 
This helps to hydrate impactions, bring water into the GI tract where we need it. It drives thirst, so your horse will go drink water. It does a lot of great things. And then we're not going to give mineral oil, or if we do, it's going to be a very, very, very small amount. When we give mineral oil, it's actually just a marker so that we know that what we put in the front end went out the back end. Mineral oil does not, not, not fix colics. It doesn't lube them up. It doesn't make impactions go away. It doesn't do any of those things. All it does is show us that things went from the front to the back. So do not berate your vet if they don't use mineral oil. They're, uh, they're ahead of the times. They're state of the art. Mineral oil is so 1980s. We're going to do an ultrasound as well to get some really great information about what's going on in the GI tract. So when I palpate, I can only get so far and get so much information. With an ultrasound, I can run down the GI tract and look at, right here, I can look at the cecum. I can come on down and see that the cecum is doing what I want it to. As I get lower, I can get an image of small intestine down here and I can see that that small intestine is modal, it's doing what I want it to, and I can also see that it doesn't have thick walls. Other information I get from an ultrasound is do we have a lot of free fluid in the abdomen? That can be an indication that we may need to do surgery. Uh, we can also see the stomach. So if I come up in this range, um, we can look at the, the duodenum as it comes out. I can see if that's full of fluid. Uh, on the other side, we can see the kidney uh, sitting with the spleen, and that is a very specific type of colic horse, horses get called a nephrosplenic entrapment. And nephrosplenic entrapments are relatively easy to diagnose with an ultrasound. Combine that with our palpation, and we're pretty close to 100% on if that's the problem. We can also diagnose displacements, torsions, that kind of thing with our ultrasound based on what we see on the image that or something we can't palpate by any means because those images are happening in this range. I know that I'm short, my arm's not very long, but nobody's arm is long enough to get down here. So those are just a few of the things that we're gonna do when we come out to make sure that we work up a colic to see, can we treat this on farm? Do we just need good hydration? Or do we need to look at going to a hospital? And if we do need to go to a hospital, we're gonna help you guys make that decision as quickly as possible because time is of the essence if we do decide that referral is necessary. Mm -hmm.